Across the world, forest fires are held at bay by the most efficient airborne firefighting platform the world has ever seen. It can skim the water to refill its tanks without landing, and deliver a high volume of water directly where it's needed. It's the Canadair CL215 Scooper family of water bombers, the most successful series of amphibious flying boats since the Second World War. The story of the CL215 starts in 1954 with Canadair's plan to build a bush plane for use in the Canadian wilderness. Called the CL43, it was designed to be a workhorse to remote regions in the north and was meant to replace the aging Douglas DC-3 transports. Designed as a land-based short takeoff and landing plane, it had a large clamshell rear loading door and twin tail booms. This made the CL-43 capable to act as a logistics transport as well as an air ambulance and a personnel or vehicle transport. Canadair approached the government of Quebec hoping to find a buyer for their new plane, but they weren't interested. The DC that it was meant to replace were flooding the market and Canadair itself was responsible for over 400 Douglas C-47s, the surplus military version of the DC-3, for commercial use. There was simply no demand for the 43. However, the Quebec government did mention their interest in aerial firefighting abilities, and a need for a new flying boat to replace their aging Cansos. Canadair was able to take advantage of the pioneering work done by the Ontario Provincial Air Service in this field. They had a lot of success converting beaver float planes and Canso flying boats into aerial firefighters. Based on this, two basic designs were being considered for the CL-204, a float plane version and a flying boat version. The CL-43 design was used as the basis for the float plane version. It would now use streamlined construction techniques integrated into its design. Firefighting was also considered as a primary role for the 204. It could be fitted with a large 5,400 liter plywood tank that could be filled by scoops located in the floats. The 204 was limited as a design and wouldn't be able to fully realize their goals. The flying boat version showed more promise. It was capable of fulfilling the firefighting roles, as well as replacing the other roles of the Canadian Vickers PBV-1 Canso. This took the project in a new direction. Its designers had a long list of applications in mind for it. They envisioned it as a utility transport, or used in maritime surveillance, search and rescue, and aerial spraying. The project was renamed CL215 in 1964, as Canadair engineers and designers set to work refining its shape through wind tunnel and water tank testing. With the project now taking shape, in 1965 Canadair secured funding from the government of Quebec. They agreed to cover 50% of the cost of acquiring the aircraft, and 50% of the development costs. They also ordered 20 aircraft. Later, the government of France placed a firm order for 10 aircraft. However, this deal came with the condition that the Canadian government buy seven Falcon Mist Air 20 business jets, to which they agreed. These orders and Quebec's investment allowed Canadair to begin construction on a prototype. Its designers had wanted to build a jack-of-all-trades amphibian, but the deal with Quebec and France was focused on firefighting. All other applications would have to be developed around that primary function. Production of the prototype started in February of 1966 at their plant in Cartierville, Quebec. The CL215 was a large plane, measuring 19.82 meters long, 8.98 meters tall at the tail, and had a wingspan of 28.6 meters. Two Pratt & Whitney R2883AM 18-cylinder radial engines are mounted above the wing. The design is fully amphibious, meaning that it can land on water like a flying boat, or land normally at an airstrip using the landing gear it keeps stowed above the boat hull section. It had a cruising speed of 291 km per hour, and carried enough fuel to remain airborne for over six hours. Most important to its primary role, it carried a 5,455 liter water tank. These tanks could be filled in under 12 seconds using two retractable scoops. No pumps are necessary to move the water up the pipe and into the tank. The forward motion of the plane through the water provides the required pressure. Dropping the water is decisively simple. There are no fancy aiming devices, just a lot of practice and a lever in the cockpit. Two large doors beneath the tanks open up and their contents are purged within a few seconds. With its low stall speed of 123 km per hour, high maneuverability and long endurance, 
the 215 had fantastic performance as a low and slow water bomber. No other plane was capable of this kind of performance, and Canadair knew they had a world beater on their hands. The first flight of the CL-215 would take place on October 23, 1967. Testing continued and the aerodynamics and operating procedures were refined. The first customers outside the government of Quebec was France's Civil Protection Agency, Sécurité Civile. They were eager to get their hands on their unique plane, but certification issues held up delivery. The Canadian Department of Transport finally gave their approval of the plane on March 7, 1969, and France received their first aircraft in June of the same year. Finally, the American FAA approved the plane on May 15, 1969, but placed it in the restricted category. This meant that it was limited to 150 hours between engine overhauls, no instrument flying, no night flying, no flying over populated areas, and no passenger transport. This would limit sales to firefighting roles, but Canada Air would still have plenty of customers. The government of Quebec received their first aircraft in June of 1970. More customers were lining up to buy this incredible new plane. These included other Canadian provinces, Italy, Spain, Yugoslavia, Venezuela, Croatia, and Greece. These sales made the Scooper the most successful amphibious flying boat since the Second World War. Two other variants were produced, the CL215B and C. The B model was slightly adapted to be more capable in the search and rescue or commercial freight role, while the C model was stripped of all of its firefighting gear and instead equipped with a revised underfloor structure, large side-mounted doors, and more windows in the main cabin area. It could carry up to 36 passengers or commercial freight. Thailand would be the sole operator of the 215s in the search and rescue role. Production of the base model 215 continued up until May 1990. Up to that point, they had completed 125 aircraft and delivered them to customers in 11 countries. The next stage in the evolution of the 215 was to replace the radial engines with modern turboprops. This would increase engine power while also providing enhanced safety and reliability. To improve aerodynamics, it would also have a redesigned rear empennage, with finlets and a bullet fairing added to the root of the tail. The cockpit would be installed with an air conditioner as well as various upgraded electrical and avionics systems. Around this time, Canada Air was in the process of being acquired by Bombardier. In 1986, after a series of financial losses due to their investment in the Challenger business jet project, the federal government decided to sell Canada Air, which was a crown corporation at that time, to Bombardier. Bombardier largely resolved the financial issues they had inherited up to that point and went on to purchase the American Learjet and Irish Short Brothers aircraft companies. Later, they would also acquire de Havilland Aircraft of Canada from Boeing. These acquisitions quickly positioned Bombardier as the leading aircraft manufacturer in the country. Two CL215s were converted to the CL215T standard in 1989 to act as technology demonstrators. They were also equipped with Pratt & Whitney 123AF turboprop engines in the place of the old radials. The 215 and subsequent models can also be fitted with four tanks of chemical retardant that can be mixed with the water. Although a big improvement over the original, market research indicated that sales of a production version CL215T would be few and far between. Bombardier officials then decided to focus on making retrofit upgrade kits that brought existing CL215s up to the T standard. The 215T was certified by the Department of Transport in March 1991 and the American FAA in March 1993. At least 22 conversions to the standard were completed. Cascade Aerospace of Abbotsford, BC are continuing the refit of old 215s to the T standard. According to their assessment, there are still around 24 piston-powered 215s operating worldwide that can be upgraded. Following the success of the 215 conversion kits, Bombardier decided to revive the scooper project by creating the all-new CL450. It was heavily based on the CL215T, but did include some changes. It had four water drop doors instead of the 215's two. It was also rated to carry a slightly heavier payload, and came with a fully electronic avionics suite. The first production prototype was finished in 1993, and took its first flight later that year in December. On June 24, 1994, the type received certification from the Department of Transport, and first deliveries took place in November. 
By July 1996, 37 aircraft were in service with operators in Canada, France, Italy, and Spain. Production of the 415 was moved from Cartierville, Quebec to Bombardier's facility in North Bay, Ontario in 1998. There were further sales to Croatia and some private contract firefighting fleets in the early 2000s. Sales of the 415 slowed down in the early 2010s, however, and Bombardier chose to close down production in 2015. A total of 95 CL-415s were built and continued to serve with operators across the world. The 2010s were a bad time for Bombardier. They were severely overstretched due to their C-Series airliner project. Looking to liquidate some underperforming assets, they began talks with Viking Air based in British Columbia. They started as a component manufacturing company but were looking to expand their business into producing conversion kits and new production aircraft. In 2016, they bought the intellectual property rights in a deal worth $37 million for all of the discontinued de Havilland Canada designs. The DCH-1 Chipmunk, DCH-2 Beaver, the DCH-3 Otter, the DCH-4 Caribou, DCH-5 Buffalo, DCH-6 Twin Otter, and the DCH-7-7. This was followed up later in 2016 when Viking also bought the type certifications for the CL-215, CL-215T, and CL-415. In June 2019, they also acquired the CS-7 Skyvan, SD-330, SD-360, and Sherpa from Bombardier's Short Brothers. Viking produced two retrofit kits for the 415. The 415 EAF, or Enhanced Aerial Firefighter Project, was started in 2018. It features a Collins Integrated Digital Avionics Suite in the cockpit, along with an increased water tank capacity, a return to the two-door dropping system, and a redesigned rear empennage. The 415 EAF is equipped with two Pratt & Whitney 123AF turbine engines for increased power and performance. The first of the CL415 EAF conversions was completed in early 2020, taking its first flight on March 9th. Six converted airframes were ordered and delivered to Bridger Aerospace of Bozeman, Montana. More EAF conversions are currently underway at their facility in Calgary, Alberta. The second Viking retrofit kit is to the 415 MP standard. This was developed for Malaysia to use in maritime patrol. The firefighting equipment has been removed, the floor redesigned, and a digital data and video recording system, high-speed satellite data link, side-looking airborne radar, infrared sensors, and a radio direction finder were installed. Viking's new production version, called the CL-515 First Responder, had been in development since 2018. It was supposed to launch in 2020, but the global pandemic changed their plans. It has many new modifications that allow it to be more versatile in and out of fire season. In addition to larger 7,000 liter water tanks, it is also equipped with a larger cargo door, fitting for a spray boom for insect control or oil spill dispersant, and the marine surveillance electronics found on the MP model. The launch customer for this new type is Indonesia. They've ordered two firefighting models and four multi-mission search and rescue models. Deliveries are expected to be made in 2024. The CL215s and 215Ts have been involved in 30 accidents over its long service life, 19 of which were fatal. The CL415 has been involved in 10 crashes. Tragically, most of these were fatal. France, Greece, and Italy have each lost three, while Portugal and Canada have each lost one. Given the dangerous mission these aircraft fly, and compared with others flying in a similar role, the safety of the scoopers is pretty good. This is, of course, no consolation to the friends and families of those lost flying the type. The CL215 series of water bombers is unquestionably the best aerial firefighter in the world. As compared with other aircraft flying similar missions, the 215 stands in a class of its own. In a single day's work, a helicopter could do 49 drops totaling 185,000 liters. Land-based aircraft could do around 15 drops totaling 200,000 liters. And the mighty DC-10 tanker could do 8 drops totaling 312,000 liters. The CL215, by contrast, could perform 115 drops, totaling an incredible 690,000 liters of water. With performance like this, Canadair's most iconic civil aircraft will grace our skies for years to come.